Well, hello and welcome to The Forgotten Golfer. Today we are going to tackle one of the darkest subjects in the game of golf, and that is the yips. Basically, the yips with a wedge when you're hitting a little pitch shot or if you're just chipping, a little chip shot. We're going to handle both of those today. And let me tell you, it's a dark day when you're out there and you hit a couple of good shots and you yip one across the green and then you yip one back or hit it fat and you end up with a bogey or double bogey after hitting two shots that are right next to the green. So we're going to tackle the yips because I think I have a good plan for you and we're going to solve the yips for you today. Isn't that great? So come on back and we'll get started. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I think you got to figure out is why do you have the yips? I mean, were you always terrible with your wedges or were you a very good wedge player at one point and then suddenly something happened and you went bad? Um, when I was younger in my 20s playing high school and college golf, I got up and down from everywhere. I was terrific. But as the years went on, and I got stiffer and I had back problems. I noticed that I didn't have the consistency in my chip shots, so I tried this and that and any other thing, and it just got worse and worse until I got the full fledged yips and I struggled with them for three or four years, which on and off, I think that I solved the problem and then it'd come back. So I know it's it's really difficult. I'm holding my own now, but we got a new season coming up. 95 degrees here today, but a small breeze. Can you believe that? Tomorrow it's going to be 70 again. But anyway, I digress. I mean, even Tiger, when he got the fusion surgery in his back, he came out and he had the yips. It's kind of hard to believe, but he said he suddenly couldn't separate his legs from his upper torso and he was having a tough time making chips so even the best in the game go through it but i have a plan and i think you you're going to take to this it's not going to be easy but the yips aren't easy to deal with so you a little work a couple of buckets of balls and i think you'll be on your way to getting rid of the yips all right Let's get started. So as you can see here, I have seven balls. Five of them, right here, are teed up. I'd say half an inch, maybe almost three quarters, but no, probably just more like half an inch. And two of them, the other two are on the turf. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get a bucket of balls, get a bag of tees, get your wedge, it's giving you the problem and tee the ball up. This is similar how we dealt with having problems hitting the fairway woods. Same thing. Now, I don't know what your technique is like, but you should be able to hit these wedges off these tees. And we're going to get you a little confidence. We're going to hit these five balls, and then we're going to jump to the, the turf balls. And that's the pattern. Hit the ones off the tee, hit a couple or one off the turf until you get your confidence back. Because right now, the yips are basically attacking your brain. That's the problem. I don't think it's a, a, a swing problem unless you, you're in pain. You're suffering from pain when you swing. But this is what we're going to do. So get really relaxed. We're going to deal with a really nice and easy gap wedge swing. Not try to hit it far. Just 
beautiful high gap wedge. Beautiful tempo. Don't try to kill it. Just hit the gap wedge. Get a little tempo going. Five wedges, then go right over. So the ball's on the turf. Same thing. Not bad. You know, it's a big change from going from the tees to the turf, but you're not thinking about it. You're just doing it. See, right now with the yips, you're getting over the ball on the course and you're You're thinking about it. Don't think about it. Just hit them. Okay? Just hit them. Now when we come back, which will be a second, I'll teach you why I think you had the yips. I think one of the major reasons for getting the yips as you get older, whether it's just chipping or it's hitting three-quarter wedges, is when we get older, we see a little shot, we use more hands and arms, and we forget about moving the shoulders. But you can't forget, it doesn't matter if it's a little chip, watch the best. Google your best players. Jordan Spieth, Lydia Ko, Annika Sorenstrom. See what they're using, those chipping strokes, and you'll see that the shoulders come right into play. They keep their arms straight, they take the club back low, they don't pick it up, and they use plenty of shoulder. Okay? That's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you. I think that's what happened to me. I stopped using my shoulders, and then I was coming around and not even coming close to hitting it solid. So, again, we're going to hit these. A little shoulder turn. Should be playing today. Five perfect shots. Of course, it's three quarter wedge. Here we go. Just keep it going. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And you'll get rid of the yips with this club in no time. Let's move on to a shorter chip shot. I chose an old, old club, sand iron, a Wilson sand iron, because it's, it's got a heaviness to it that I like. It really doesn't have any bounce, it's pretty sharp. There's a little bit of bounce, but not much. But it's an old favorite, and I use it quite often, especially in the beginning of the year. So what we're gonna do, same thing, shoulder turn. We're gonna play the ball back, though, You know, when I hit balls, I've been hitting balls every week since January, and I stiffen up, but my back doesn't go through quite the same pain as it does the day after I chip. It must be because of the way I'm moving through the hips through the ball, and that's what you need to do on a chip. Even though your feet are together, you're still moving. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little, and we're gonna hold it, try to hold it right in here. Not gonna gum up. We're gonna try. So, same thing. You hit these five, then move on to these two, 
that don't have tees. These are all teed up a little lower, probably less than a half an inch off the ground, except for maybe one, because it's kind of in a hole. But we're just going to chip these nice and easy, get a rhythm. You should be able to do it. I should be able to do it. We're going to take the club back low. We're not going to pick it up. We're going to have some shoulder turn and boom, keep it low. Boom. All right. Ready? Put our feet together. I play it back. Because of the loft on this club, they're going a little high. There it is, there's a low one. Perfect, perfect chips. Probably 30 yard chip. That was like a 15 yard chip. One more. That's a little high, not far at all. Okay, the two balls on the ground. That's a short, high lofted chip. Let's see if we can get a little lower. And there you go. Now, I've been working with this for a little while so it's easier for me but this is the first steps of you getting rid of these terrible terrible things that destroy your game and I think you can do it like I always say and I really mean it if I can do it you can do it and uh, like I said chipping and pitching really takes a toll on my back that's why for the chips I'm have to play my ball back in the stance because I don't want to be going through it so much. So that's it. You can do this. You can get rid of the yips forever. Just follow these instructions and don't give up. And I'll see you next time when you can tell me, Tony, the yips are gone. Take care.